D.B. Cooper, 1971, has a wild scheme to jump out of the back of an airplane at 10,000 feet in the middle of the night in a rainstorm over unknown territory. The guy either had to be crazy or brilliant and have mad skills. Right at the spot we're standing here, we've calculated that this is the precise location that Brian Ingram, when he was eight years of age, scooped across the sand with his arm and uncovered the three bundles of bills which have been the only Cooper cash ever recovered from that hijacking event in 1971. Well, I, I think it's a, it's a great mystery. You know, what happened to this guy? The last thing we knew is he had $200,000 and uh, bailed out of the back of a 727 uh, November, November 24th, 1971. Uh, and then from there, we don't know. If we can find resolution to the case without allocating resources, without sending FBI manpower to the investigation, but come up with an answer, then why wouldn't we do that? We have with us a team of people that have all volunteered their time, their money, and their effort to come try and solve this just purely for the excitement of doing it. Right now we're on Tina Bar and we're looking at the location where the money was found. Tomorrow we're going to be heading off to look at unpublished photos from the Oregonian newspaper which could tell us exactly what was going on here at that time. And then at the end of the week we're heading up to Seattle to meet with Special Agent Larry Carr to look at the FBI archive. Right now we're in the Little Washougal River, which is east of the flight path of D.B. Cooper and where they think he potentially jumped out. We're here because the Little Washougal River and the Washougal River are the biggest rivers in the area that are capable of moving a wad of money like this downstream. So it's thought that his money fell into one of these two rivers, went downstream, hit the Columbia River, and then moved further south on the Columbia River toward the ocean until it showed up on Tina Bar. We were out here making a campfire, my father and I, and that's when we discovered, uh, uh, discovered the three packets of $20 bills, um, later to be proven as ransom money of D.B. Cooper. We're throwing a lot of technology at these Cooper bills and trying to figure out the history, what caused them to degrade, what degradation components have been mixed in with them, and does this tell us something about where these Cooper bills have been? He's got a pack of, of uh, bills on there. Trying to find out how buoyant it is, and, and as far as what's the distance it's going to travel, uh, we seem to find its location right here, where it seems like it's wanting to come right back to us, and which happens to be right at the spot that I found the money, um, 1980. Why am I so interested in DB Cooper? Who isn't interested in DB Cooper after hearing um, a little bit of the story? I'm a scientific illustrator at the University of Chicago and I'm part of the team and I'm working with Tom and the beginning part of my job here it was to do some research and I located some images and so we, now we have an appointment at the Oregonian to look at some unpublished photos taken by some of the staff photographers that I was able to locate and the second part of my job with Tom is going to be doing some scientific illustrations for his paper maybe some maps or charts or anything that he might need for his research you know, the whole goal is to start bringing some science, some new technology into the case. Uh, the investigation's long over. Uh, we know <laughs> what we know from what the FBI uh, has done all those years. And, and now it's time to, you know, maybe give someone else a chance to allocate or let someone else allocate their own resources to the investigation. And hopefully that shakes something new.